It is really starting to look the business now inside. While we crack on and get a few more bits of interior upholstery on, you take a look at Ian Proudfoot's Jensen 451S. It's a top car. When you come back, we should be ready to start putting the carpets in. It's a 1961 car. They finished production in 1963. Jensen was a, a, a car manufacturer, all English, from West Brom near Birmingham. The basic of this car was a 541 brought out in 1954. So mine is, if you like, a dinosaur of the breed. It's the last one before it became extinct, and they changed to a car called the CVAs, which had an American engine. I bought this car 11 years ago. It was from the proverbial barn in a small village near Wakefield. It was in a state, a lot of the chassis was rusted away, the chassis had to be replaced. Parts weren't too bad, and the Jensen Owners Club did have a, a spares department, which held some. Other than that, if you're missing an odd switch, it's around the auto jumbles, I'm afraid, which did take quite a while. It's a hand-built car, and therefore it's not quite the same to put back together as, say, maybe a more mass-produced car, which is done probably to finer specifications. The engine in the 51S is a DS5 engine, Austin Straight 6. The car has three SU carburetors and a slightly higher compression than the usual DS5 engine. It took me a long time to choose the colour. It took six months at least. I always wanted to stick to the two-tone. In the end, I actually got my hands on the original salesman's brochure, and I rang ICI, and they looked back through their historic records, and it turned out that the brochure cover was uh, Jensen Indigo Blue and Jensen Botticelli Blue. And so I painted the car the same as their sales department, marketing department, decided they would like it on the cover of the brochure. And I think it's turned out very well. It's something that always gets a lot of compliments from general members of the public. I would say there's two levels of restoration. If you make your mind up to just get it back on the road, use it and enjoy it, that's absolutely fine, that's wonderful. It's what cars should be for, really. If you make your mind up to make it more like a work of art, a piece of sculpture, and you go to the nth degree, break it right down, strip it, start from the beginning, it'll save you money and time in the long run. And it'll give you more pleasure when you finish it. Welcome back. We've already started putting in the carpets. And we've got a great tip for you. It's down here. Sticking stuff over intricate places like that box section is always a nightmare because it starts peeling up from the edges. So how do you stop that? Um, any awkward bits of carpet or any of the trim really, a little tip would be is to, to glue it up first, like a primer glue, and that way leave that totally to go off. And then the next time you glue it up, it will stick a lot better, a lot firmer. Well, so it's almost like the glue sticking to glue. Yes, right? rather than it sticking to the back of the carpet. But before we can lay in the footwell carpets, we need to stick some carpet on the side of the tunnel over the gearbox and put in the centre console. <laughs> yes, it looks as though it's come off a motorbike, but no, it's the centre console, of course. Basically what Frosty's done is completely reupholster this in leather. You can see the original underneath here where it's all being cleaned up. Underneath the leather here is just eighth inch foam, like the stuff that was put on the sills. The edging here, which is really nice, the piping, comes as a big long length, which then gets cut into the right size to fit around here and then glued in place when you put the other panels on. We've got a new nice centre armrest here with our little glove box which is very nice indeed. The other parts of the console, because there are three major parts, are the radio housing here. Now, I'm not sure this radio was the original in this car. And then this third is a little bit that houses the ashtray. It's a nice little touch, be very good for putting your coins in when you want to pay at the parking meters, and it's got that lovely jag on the front. The theory is that it should, if you've got it in the right gear, put it into third, there we go. That will slot over there. Just 
slowly. There we go. But that is a lovely fit. In the original 3.8 litre series one, this was all aluminium, as was the dash here. The Jaguar felt that an aluminium dash and an aluminium console was a bit glary and too easily damaged, which is why they went for a vinyl finish on here and a leather finish on here. But there was an argument saying this was actually a much cheaper thing to do than aluminium, so that might have been the reason they went for it. Personally, I think it looks better all in black. Now, radio console. Go, lovely jubbly. Next, we can test fit the rest of the carpets. Now, the seat itself is here. Let me just show you the underside. Does that look lovely? That looks yeah. lovely. Absolutely, guys. Almost brand new. Frosty's done a top job with it. It drops in place in here, like so. And the fixing is very, very straightforward. It's basically four attachments through the floor of the car. Two are mushroom bolts at the front, which means the runners just slide into those and get trapped. And then two other bolts come up the back and fix it in place. And then there you have it. So did that sound completely ridiculous that I wanted a 4.2 litre because it was more comfortable? No. No, very sensible, I think you'll agree. That's it for part one. We've got to fix all this stuff in here now, but join me after the break when we'll be starting work on the roof. Thank you. Welcome back to A Car Is Reborn. I have got fantastic news. Jaguar themselves have been in touch and they've invited this car, HPJ 969C, my car, to take part in their centenary rally. That is a huge privilege and an honour to be there. So we've got a bit of a deadline to get this thing finished now. Is that rain? Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. What we need is a roof. This is the original hood frame. Frosty, you can give us a hand with it. It's all been sandblasted and sprayed up original grey. It has already actually been on the car, but we had to take it off to do the upholstery. So before we can put...